My name is Andrew McDonnell and I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm the director of Studio 3. To do this kind of work really well, you have to have that ability to be connected with people. We're going to talk about horrible things like restraint and cultures that have emerged that really, really high levels of restrictions are there. Locking doors, you know, restrictions of movements for people, particularly around people with disabilities and autism. But everything I'm going to talk about applies across the field. We haven't taught any hold downs in my organisation since 1991. In fact, since we were founded, we've never taught them. That has challenged some organisations because they're always asking the what if question. Well, what if there's two people? What if I'm caught in this situation? We tend to not teach one person restraint holds. A, because you don't have a witness to that, and B, because they're really difficult to do without inflicting huge amounts of pain on people. Some things that are perceived by by care staff in, in work as not being restraint, um, actually, when, when you look at it and when they think about it properly, it is a form of, of restraining that person. So it was kind of good to then have the experts in the field talking about how we can actually achieve this and how we can make it a reality, rather than just a document that people are reading but not necessarily knowing what to do with. And I think the key thing is getting people to think reflectively on a training course, not just the skills they're taught. That's the key issue for me. I tend to use low arousal in, in practice, in situations, I'm quite calm. What do we mean by low arousal? Well, I suppose um, one of the, the, the things that most people talk about and on any training course people will talk about uh, in any incident is keep calm. It was nice to hear um, what the lecturer said really because it's sort of like check, a t checklist I was ticking like yeah that's what I'd do, that's what I wouldn't do. So it's good, it's a good guide for someone who's never heard of low arousal. Keep calm? Believe me you're anything but calm when you're getting a chair heading towards you. The lower arousal is very very important when it comes to people with learning disability because I won't say they haven't got the knowledge or ability, they've got it but it depends the way you push it to them. The lecture is so useful, to be honest. The, today's lecture is, is so useful, it's so fantastic. What have I just done? Touched, eye contact, and I've invaded personal space. And you wonder why you, you get a whack. You don't need to be emotional about how you respond to behaviours, about sometimes it's stopping and thinking, and perhaps backing away and reducing the pressure on the individual. I think the main thing I took away from the lecture on the low arousal approach is how important it is to know your individual and exactly what their boundaries are. And the term we're going to talk about is well-being and happiness. Happiness is a subjective term, so is quality of life, so are a lot of other terms. Like I said, think of one thing that makes you happy. You don't have to say it. One little thing. And do more of it. That's what the research shows. It's pretty good for you. I learnt um, about well-being that um, it's really important to remember that when you're working with the services with learning disabilities. I think that can get lost. You get to a state where your thinking part of your brain starts to just diminish and you're just in the moment. That's called flow. And flow is considered to be very good for your stress management. Most people try to receive a sense of flow. That's their coping strategy. If you don't have things that achieve a sense of flow, get some. It's very important to people's well-being. And it's important for ourselves as well to take the time to think about um, what makes us happy and what keeps us well. Obviously mind and body are all connected as well so um, people who experience sort of um, mental well-being tend to have physical well-being as well. I've been fortunate to have a placement with Studio 3. It's always interesting hearing that different perspective by different trainers, um, different people in the field. Okay, our mission in life is to keep people safe, promote well-being, you know, do really, really constructive stuff around that area. It's about organisational change for me and about having that buy-in. Um, so it's not just you working in isolation as a practitioner, but it's about having that shared multidisciplinary approach. The other thing about the lower rise approach is it's not just a theory, it's something that people can take out into practice. And as an academic here in the university, that's something that we instill with students from the first time we, we sort of meet them throughout their three year course. Have some passion. Yeah, you can't do this type of work without some kind of passion. So I've really taken away obviously what Studio 3 are trying to do as well, which is training staff to to work correctly with people.